Today we've got a crazy entitled parent story of a mom who doesn't know which side to stick to. We'll get to that in a bit, but first, entitled mother pepper sprays cosplayer. Something happened that reminded me of a story from a little while back, so I thought about posting it here. As some of you know, I'm from a little country called Denmark on the island called Fyn. And in the city Odense, there's a thing called Magic Days, based on the Harry Potter books, where the entire city gets a fantasy vibe and the city makes some activities like making your own broom or wand or maybe hold an owl. Every year, they have two days where this is active. The first day, the bad guys win a fictional war, and the second day, the good guys win. I was a cosplayer whose role was to walk around the city with a costume and converse like I was my figure. The character I was playing was a cult leader with bone decor around some red and black robes and a skull mask. This is important for later. So it was about half the day till my shift was over on my second day. So I had to find young wizards and witches to join the Scarlet Moon. Until I stumbled over to a friend of mine who I'll call Peter for this story. He was wearing a ghost-like bodysuit made to look like a Dementor. So we started to talk. I said, the day has soon come for us to take control. Say to the Marsh King, I have soon found our champion. Peter says, yes, Master Julius, the king shall be notified. We almost broke character because it felt awesome to be these powerful characters, but before we did, a young boy around eight came up to us and said, can I get a picture with you two? I said, of course, my little chaos ling. Wraith, please accompany us. Peter said, yes, Master. The mom then came over, and me and my friend sat on our knees for the picture. After the picture was taken, I asked the kid, Do you want to join the Brotherhood of the Scarlet Moon? Before the kid could say anything, he was taken to the side by his mother, before she took out a pepper spray and sprayed me in the face while screaming, You demon spawn shall never take my innocent boy with you, you vile beast. I started to scream and cry like crazy. Remember, I'm still 17 by the time this happened, and Peter was 18, and I reacted like a normal person would. I said, what the freak are you doing? Before starting to wiggle in pain. While I was laying on the ground, I could hear Peter's voice saying, get away from him, you absolute witch, before I'm gonna pepper spray you. This was wild. I never heard Peter yell without him yelling in character. This was his real yell. Don't you dare touch me, you non-believer. I should send you to heck myself if it wasn't a sin to kill, said the entitled mother. Now I heard Peter go silent. Hey, leave the kids alone before I call the police. It was a male bystander and he was a bodybuilder type with a big beard and heavy boots. Or that's what Peter said anyway. Then the Karen said to him, just mind your own business. Ma'am, you're hurting the kids right now, leave them be, said the nice guy. And Karen said, you wouldn't dare to help these Satan spawn. You're helping spread evil. I'm doing the right thing here, said nice guy before scooping me up and trying to walk away. Then the Karen jumped on the back of the nice guy and started hitting him in the face and he accidentally dropped me. Somewhere around this time, some bystanders were holding down the woman who were screaming about me and my friend were demons. Somebody had called the police and when they arrived, multiple people were against her. Then I was taken to my supervisor who cleaned my eyes and I had permission to take the day off. Instead, I relaxed until the big fight and excused my red eyes, a demon had found a host in the cultist. I had a fun rest of the day and I got a restraining order on the crazy woman. Now, I don't know if this person was just traveling and didn't understand anything that was going on here or if they just lived on a rock, but surely OP and their friend weren't the only people walking around that even looked like that. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you can't get enough of hearing about these entitled parents, why not hit that subscribe button down below? That said, our next story is, it's me again, parents being even more crappy, need advice. A few days ago, I posted here about my parents being jerks about my camping trip. I'm back from my trip, and my parents have behaved worse than before. As context, the day I left home for my trip, I was a bit rushed as my boyfriend was waiting for me outside and we still had to buy a few things. I put on my backpack, which was pretty big, you know, a camping backpack, and went to say goodbye to my dad. My mom wasn't home at the time. My dad told me to take off my backpack to give me a hug, to which I told him I'd rather not take it off since it was so heavy and it's such a hassle to put it on and get it snug. When I told him that, he started to tell me that it was better not to hug me. Anyway, he gave me a hug reluctantly. He told me that it was the worst hug in the world and that I better leave. 
I felt bad and texted him saying, I felt bad for what you said to me, to which he replied, don't feel bad. Fast forward, I went on the trip. Everything went excellent and now I'm back home. When they saw me, they said hello. Each gave me a crappy hug and asked nothing about whether I'd enjoyed the trip. Absolutely nothing. I told them, you don't look very happy to see me. You barely hugged me. To which my dad said, don't say anything to me. You're the one who didn't want to hug me the other day. And my mom took his side and basically shamed me for feeling bad about my dad's sayings and that I shouldn't complain if they don't give me affection later because I rejected it. I tried to explain that I was in a hurry and I didn't want to keep my boyfriend waiting too long. To which my dad says, and the guy couldn't wait? And I responded, is it so hard to give me a hug while wearing a backpack? There's something else that bothers me there. My dad doesn't approve of my boyfriend very much. Mostly because he has a patriarchal view about men in relationships. The boyfriend should be my superhero. Should always pay for everything and should take care of me and be responsible for me, etc. Neither I or my boyfriend share this vision. I made that clear to my father a long time ago. But he insists that he doesn't approve of my boyfriend because he's not the way he wants. And that's why every time he refers to him, he doesn't call him by his name, he calls him the guy. This bothers me a lot, not only because I've been in a relationship with my boyfriend for a year, but also because I feel that he's disrespecting me too, and it seems stupid that he won't call him by his name. When my dad is with my boyfriend face to face, he does call him by his name, but when he talks about him, he calls him the guy. I really don't know how to make him understand that this behavior bothers me since I've tried to do it and he doesn't seem to want to change, plus my mom defends him. I'm considering looking for a job and a roomie to leave this house. I think this all just boils down to simple respect. If they can't respect you, or your time for that matter, or the people you care about, is it worth giving your time or care to them in return? This next story is Entitled Dad Goes Ballistic in Parking Lot. One morning I went to Dunkin Donuts to get some coffee and a bagel. It was a beautiful day, sunny and fresh. I got into my car, unwrapped my treat, and just as I was taking a bite, wham, my car rocks cause something slammed into my car door. I looked up shocked, only to see an angry looking middle aged man with the dumbest sunglasses and pink face. How do you like it? He shouts down from his Dodge Durango as he slams his car door into mine forcefully a second time. Shocked and outraged, I shout what the freak through my open window while he continues to yell obscenities at me. He starts screaming that I hit his car when I opened my door. I literally do not remember this. I don't recall hearing it or feeling it when I got it, but it's possible that I just wasn't paying attention. So honestly, at most, it would have been a tap. Either way, I definitely didn't slam my car door into his, and he was doing a heck of a lot more damage to his car than the alleged damage I could have done. My adrenaline skyrockets. I'm yelling too now, and I open my door and stand up to confront this dude, and he jumps back, reaches around the seats, and puts a confused toddler on his lap. A shield? Is this dude using his toddler as a shield? This dude really thinks I'm about to do violence or something. It was a good move though, because I immediately realized what a joke this dude was, and how sorry I felt for the kid he wanted to protect himself with. What a chump he was for doing all that with a baby in the car the whole time. I'm a black woman, and I was 22 years old at the time. He was white, probably late 30s, early 40s. I bring my race up because after that confrontation, I was baffled at why he looked scared when I got up. I'm 5'5", five five, maybe 180 pounds. Really can't fathom why he suddenly grew fearful. Did he think I was going to shoot him or punch him? It was really freaking weird, and now, over a decade later, I still think about that guy occasionally. Like, what was his deal? Why would he bang up his car so much? I had a beater car at the time, a 97 Lumina, so it's not like he could have thought I cared about my car. I think this fits here. Details on what exactly are said are vague because it was a long time ago. I just know it was heated. I'm not a confrontational person and this was the most explosive interaction I've ever had with a stranger while sober. I would almost just resort to assuming that this guy was hopped up on some kind of substance. I mean, I don't think any rational person would do what this guy did. 
So either they've got some kind of illness or they got some kind of substance. That's my unprofessional amateur diagnosis. Our next story is, my friend's mom is crazily entitled and weird. For privacy, I'll refer to my friend as Brad. His little brother is Amos and her mother, the entitled parent, as Sarah. Sarah and nice dad are split up and there's a lot of bad blood in general. So I met Brad in year five and a long-standing friendship had ensued. We both hang out in the same social circle. But the only issue is that his mother Sarah has always been hard to be around. For example, once when I had a broken leg and couldn't do much, I went to Brad's house. She said she would look after me, but the only problem was she picked me up and didn't tell my parents the address. On top of that, she had an 8 hour work meeting at the house, meaning we had to be quiet and not make noise for 8 hours. The whole time, she had do not disturb on, so my parents wondering where I was couldn't get any response. When she finally finished her meeting, she told my parents the address and I was picked up at 8.30 having been given no dinner. Anyway, Brad came over to my house last week after getting dropped off by nice dad. We hoped this would mean no interaction with Sarah, but no. Amos asked if Brad could pick up the VR headset he got at Christmas from their dad, which was for some reason at Sarah's house. Brad called Sarah and she didn't answer. He explained to her voicemail that he was going to go pick up the headset. We walk up to his house to pick it up, and 30 minutes later, as he was about to get picked up by his stepmom, he received a call. He slumps, I see his eyes grow shadowed, he gets pale and he takes the call. Instantly I hear screaming. His mom wants Brad to bring back the VR headset, it isn't even a gift that she gave. I try to get him to not give it back, but he ends up giving it back. I feel bad for any kid that has to live in a household where a parent is so willing to just go nuclear and blow up and act out to get their kids to just comply and give up everything. It, I think it really conditions you in a bad way. Sadly, I think Brad growing up is going to have things to work through. Our next story is, my dad thought I was manipulating him since I was 7. I, 15 year old female, have a tendency to not count change or money when it's given to me, and my dad, 47 year old male, hates it. It's not like I just give people wads of cash or anything. It's just that if my friend gives me the exact amount of money to pay for something, then I trust that they counted it properly. This hasn't gotten me in trouble with anyone but my father. My dad says that when I don't count the change, it just makes me seem dumb to other people, despite him knowing I'm smart. So the story starts when my dad drops me off at my therapist. Just before I get out of the car, he counts the money and I remember him getting to $170 exact. He hands me the money and I go off to my appointment. He picks me up and waits in a chair while I pay the therapist. Now, keep in mind, I just went through therapy. My brain is frazzled, and my mind is currently replaying everything that was said in the session. So, when I see a bunch of random bills in my hand, I just panic and forget how to count properly. I turn to my dad and say, hey dad, you gave me 170, right? He looks up from his phone, looks me in the eyes and says, you can count, can't you? Now I'm embarrassed and my therapist is in the room, so I just mumble some strange mix of yeah and I can count. I count it, yes it was 170 exact, and we head off into the car. My dad is upset and he says something along the lines of, I don't understand why you do that. You always make yourself look bad by acting dumb when you aren't. I'm used to him acting like this, so I say, which do you think looks worse? Me looking dumb, or you asking your own kid if they can count? He stays silent for about two seconds and comes in with examples of me acting dumb. He talks about instances where I'm looking for something and even look up as if it though it could be on the ceiling. I explain that when I'm panicked and looking for something, I do sometimes look up, but never for more than a second just to clear my head. Then he brings up when I was looking for the TV remote and he said, It's over there while he was behind me and I looked the other direction. I had to try my best to not be sarcastic as I explained that no, I can't magically tell what over there means. He isn't done though and he says something that shocks me. Even when you were seven you would act dumb to get sympathy out of people. I'm sorry, what? What seven year old is manipulating people for sympathy? Not to mention I'm the youngest child so I don't think I was lacking in the attention department. I ask him, 
Why on earth would a child pretend to be dumb so that they can get sympathy? I hate being perceived as dumb and you know that. Not to mention, who did I want sympathy from just now? The only other person in the room was my therapist and I think she has enough sympathy for me. Surprisingly, he doesn't totally dismiss me and just asks why I would pretend to be dumb then if it wasn't for sympathy. I explained to him that some people can just have trouble making their brain function after things like therapy, and I've always had trouble doing anything math related when under stress. He then gets concerned because, how can we possibly send you to college when you can't count? I explained to him I can count and what happened earlier is even more proof that they can send me out on my own because I handle the situation very well. In the 10 or so seconds it took for me to panic, I 1. Acknowledged I was panicking 2. Acknowledged that if I tried to count and got it wrong it would make me seem bad 3. Realized the best way to figure out how much money I had without messing up was to ask someone 4. Decided to ask him since I remembered him counting the money already He took this as a good enough answer, laughed about something, and then we left the car and went inside the store. At this point, we had just been arguing in the car in the parking lot of a store. I can't say I'm surprised he thought this about me for 8 years since he likes making assumptions about people's behaviors and never asking them, but I'm just shocked he can come up with something so ludicrous. I'm definitely cutting off a lot of contact with my parents after I graduate college, because they can get much worse than this. I would do it earlier, but I'm graduating high school at 16 and won't be a legal adult until I'm two years into college. Also, they're paying for my schooling, and as selfish as it might be, I would like to not lose that and be in debt. So, is OP's dad intentionally acting dumb about how OP is acting for sympathy? All this time, I think OP's dad's trying to label them as intentionally acting dumb when they themselves are intentionally acting dumb about not hearing OP out or hearing their reasoning. This next story is, my dad gives me nothing and tries to control anything I do have. My dad, as stated in the title, tries to control me over what I have, but gets me anything and when I mean anything, I really mean everything. No phone, no freedom, no tech. I am allowed, but either get sarcastic remarks or get yelled at. He makes stupid decisions with money and clearly spoils my siblings and leaves me in the dust. It's obvious just by the way he greets us in the morning. When I wake up earlier than my father, of course you're awake, what else should I expect? Nothing more than that from you. When my sister wakes up earlier than my father, oh darling, you're awake, that must mean you got good sleep, is that so? This wouldn't bother me, except he just revokes me from all of my social events. My friends have their own group chats and go out frequently, while I am only expected to study. He takes pride in my successes and never bothers to help me with my failures. For example, I took trumpet lessons for four years, and eventually moved through the instruments through the horn section, from trumpet to the French horn to the euphonium. Once I brought the euphonium home, he started flexing to everyone. All everything is to him is studying. The entire thing that even influenced me to write this post was the fact that I couldn't even get through a soda can while watching videos without him shouting at me. I wake up at 6 and arrive home at 4. Just one of my homeworks is 2 hours along with the rest. Next is money. When I have money from things like birthdays, I save them, and even though it's my money, he takes control of it. He can take money when he pleases, and when I object, he says, What do you need this money for? I'm also blamed for everything. The computer that was made before I was born and has been used since then and is naturally getting slow, it's my fault I messed it up. He's even taken my headphones just so he can listen to what I'm watching. But does this happen to my brothers and sisters? No, and I can't do anything. I can't even get a voice in, which is why I'm loud, but this has been brought into conversation with friends, and they get annoyed when I use hand signs to grab attention or speak loudly. Sorry for the rant, I know I didn't put my age, as I want that confidential, but this annoys me. Out of every single friend I have, my dad is the strictest. So, unfortunately, I don't know if this is a situation you're necessarily going to ever resolve, But I think OP should put their foot down, and if they keep getting treated like the scapegoat while the other kids are the golden children, when you turn 18, you make a lot of distance, and maybe they'll wonder, why are you so distant from me? Well, it's because you never respected OP and their belongings. 
This next story is, my mom called me promiscuous for years, but now wants me to get married. My female, 24, mom has called me promiscuous since I was a teenager, but now wants me to get married. I grew up with a single mother, dad left when I was a kid, and I made sure to make life as stress-free as possible for her. I had to make up for my dad leaving. He was physically abusive and would hurt my brother when he was a baby by limiting my mother's stress. My mother blames us for sending my father away and ruining any chance of her finding a husband because she had to take care of us. She believes that we must repay that debt. I would walk my little brother to school from the time I was seven. I would wake up early when I was in high school to do my mom's college homework. If I struggled with her assignments or got her a low mark, she would accuse me of trying to sabotage her. I took on a job in high school that would allow me to pay my mom's car insurance help out with rent, and pay for anything else she needed. I never dated in high school or my early 20s. I went to school, work, and came home. My home life was chaotic. My mother would demand my older sister strip off her clothes to check for signs that she might be sexually active. My other sister was choked by my mom for standing up for herself. When I was 18 and had my first crush, My mom would text me every day to tell me that my crush would give me HIV and I would die. That I would get pregnant and he would leave me. That crush ended quickly. When my sister found her partner, my mom told me that I was not allowed to visit my sister. She said that I was promiscuous and that I wanted to ruin my sister's relationship with her boyfriend. I have no friends. My parents told me to never trust anyone slash people will ruin you. My sisters live in cities far from me, so the only person I have is my mother. My little brother doesn't really speak to anyone. Now that I'm 24, soon to be 25, and living on my own with no friends or relationship to speak of, my mom is suddenly worried about me. She went from calling me promiscuous and telling me that I would get HIV to demanding that I start dating for marriage. She told me that her years on this planet are getting shorter and she wants to see me at a wedding dress and with children of my own someday. She can't believe how selfish I am after everything she's done for me. She wants me to take care of her when she gets older, my sisters have cut her off, and wants to see me with a husband by my side. I feel zero connection to my mother, so I can't imagine having children of my own someday. I've completely ruled it out. I've decided that I do my best on my own, so dating is not a part of my life. I want to be alone for the rest of my life. I'm really tired, and all I want is peace and quiet. I grew up with a mom that would scream and bang on walls when she didn't get what she wanted. Now that I'm on my own, I relish the silence. I can't give her the life that she's built in her head. Going from promiscuous to housewife to please my mother is not a part of my plans. Now she's back to sending me messages calling me names and wishing that she aborted me because I'm selfish and ungrateful. I thought this new year would be different. I prayed that it would be different. I was wrong. I totally respect OP's decisions to want to live alone, just go solo in life. I think a lot of people are quick to shame or put down or judge somebody like that, but I think some people are just happiest on their own. I think it might also be by and large a big product of the way they grew up. I know personally I definitely can thrive when I'm just on my own. I don't know if OP's in a situation where they can support themselves, but I would think the next step is just cutting that mom off. I mean all their sisters did. Our next story is, mom is proud of me for overcoming trauma she caused so I can start having kids. I've been debating posting this for quite some time, since the holidays but decided to show that no matter how hard you try to make things work, sometimes they just don't. I lived with my mom and my dad for 17 years of my life. During those 17 years, I was hurt physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, you name it, by my narcissistic, incredibly dangerous mother. I was routinely given nothing but bread to eat because she had to give me something by law and reminded me that her work, social worker, was more important than anything I would ever amount to. She cheated on my dad numerous times, drank regularly and heavily, included drinking and driving, forced me to sleep in the living room so my brother would get his own room and a game room, and so many other things that caused me to leave home when I graduated high school at 17. 
I paid for my own college and have $30,000 in student loans to show for it at 27, didn't really speak to her for half a decade, but then had some pretty serious medical issues that left me homeless. I was allowed to come to their new house, where I didn't have a room yet again. My brother had one and was slash is still living with them to get on my feet. I was there maybe three months before I left again for good and moved across the United States to hopefully leave her for good. I've hopped around the country since then but didn't go back home. I hadn't spoken to her in two years when I was invited to the house for Thanksgiving. Work gave me three days off, so I decided to try and make amends. I went, it was an amicable time, I left. I went to my grandparents' house for the winter holidays and my mom decided she wanted to visit too. I went, it was amicable, I left. After leaving my grandparents' house, heading home and forgetting all about it, I got a letter about a week later. It was from my dad, or so I thought. It was incredibly heartwarming because my dad's not a super emotional person, so I was excited to see a letter from him, until I found out my mom had copied my dad's handwriting style, used his stationery, and then surprised me by writing the letter. In the letter, she apologized for all of the wrongs she did, all of the trauma she caused, all of the pain that was wrought upon me and expressed gratitude in coming to see her. Sounds great, right? Well, in the second half, she mentioned that now that I overcame the trauma she had passed down from her mother, I could begin to have kids with my partner and make her happy. I have long been persistent to both my parents that I do not want kids. My partner doesn't want kids. I'm not having kids. I haven't responded to my mom and probably won't because she knows I don't want kids and is now trying to guilt trip me into having them. It's just so tiring to me that now that I try to mend the fence, she's making it all about her and what she wants. Just goes to show there's always, always, always an ulterior motive with narcissists, and unfortunately they likely will never change. Isn't that something, that after all those years, they have the nerve to finally recognize that they knew it all along? They pop up and say, oh, I'm sorry for this and that and for all the years of torture. By the way, can you also start doing this thing that I now want from you? I don't want to make it obvious, but I figured out a new way that you could be useful to me, is basically what they're saying. It is straight up crazy. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely crazy entitled parent story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, click on that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.